Hi, I'm Akil Mohudin, and today we're going to learn about some more complicated logic gates. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to add two bits together. So let's get started. In the previous video, we talked about AND, OR, and NOT logic gates. AND is the one that's true when both inputs are true, OR is the one that's true when at least one input is true, and NOT is an inverter. So if input is true, output is false. If input is false, output is true. So let's say you wanted to make a logic gate that had a truth table like this. So what would it be? Well, first of all, let's see. This is very similar to an AND gate, except every single one of the outputs is the complete opposite, or every single output is inverted. So let's say this 0, 0, 0. Here it's 0, 0, 1. So that means this gate right here, this truth table we just drawn out, is actually the truth table for a gate called NAND. Okay, and this means not AND. It's a not and an AND gate. So the output of an AND gate goes into a NOT gate. And the way you draw it is the same as an AND gate, except with a little bubble at the end. Okay, now I'm going to show you how we make this circuit in a little bit. But this one is a NOT OR gate, or it's called a NOR gate. And it's the same thing. When you do a NOT gate, it's just you put a little bubble at the end. Okay, and this is the truth table for NOR. So now let's make the circuit for a NAND gate. So NAND gate looks like this. Now, one would think that you would just take an AND gate and then put a NOT gate after it. And you can do that, except there's another way you can make a NAND gate that only lets you use tr two transistors. And this is how you do it. So you have this. I'm going to stop drawing uh, pull-down resistors because that's a waste of my time. And it just overcomplicates the circuit. You should know that you need to use um, pull-down resistors by now. So. This is going to be your output Y right here. And this is going to go to your voltage, VCC. And at the same time, it's going to go to the collector of one. Okay, so this is how you do a NAND gate. So output will be true when both inputs are false. And this, when both inputs are true, voltage is going to instead go through the transistors and out to ground because all LEDs have a small um, resistance to them. So that means the resistance of voltage going through Y to ground is going to be higher than voltage going through this 1k resistor through the transistors and out to ground. And since voltage current always is lazy and goes through the path of least resistance, when both inputs are true, when this logic gate is total set to true, its voltage is just going to flow straight here and this output Y is going to be skipped and it's going to be false. Both A and B are going to be able to trigger the exact same transistor. So that means even if one of A and B are true, this transistor is going to be true and voltage is going to flow through the transistor and out to ground. And we can take a look at these on the breadboard. This is a NAND gate. When both inputs are false, input is true. When only one input is true, output is true. When both inputs are true, output is false. Now this is a NOR gate. And when both inputs are false, output is true. When one input is true, output is false. And when both inputs are true, output is false.
Now I told you that we were going to learn how to do addition today. So let's think of what the truth table is for addition and then we'll make a circuit that applies that. Okay, so zero plus zero should be zero. One plus zero should be one. Zero plus one should also be one. Now one plus one, one plus one equals two. And how do you write two in binary? You write it one zero, where this is the first digit. Okay, now since we only have one output here, our output is the first digit, because you can say that these are all the same thing as zero, 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 one, where the zeros are the second digit. But we are only showing the first digit. So that means this should technically be zero. So what logic gate would do this? Well, it's called an X or gate. So this is the circuit for an XOR gate. So now let's check it out to see if this truth table is actually correct. So if we have 0, 0, that means this is 0, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0. And we know that this will be 1 because of this is a NAND gate. So then this is 1 and this is 1. And 1, 0 is 1. 1 and 1 1 is 0 so output is 0 okay now let's try 1 0 this is 1 this is 0 this is 0 this is 1 this is 1 one, one. So this is one, or sorry, this is zero, and this is one, and this is one, so this is zero, so this is one. Now, if you're having any trouble understanding this, go back to the, go back to a point previous in the video where you can see the truth table for a NAND gate, because these are made up of four. NAND gates. These are all four NAND gates. The XOR gate. All right. So now let's check zero, one. This is zero. This is zero. This is one. This is one. This is one. This is one. So this is one. And so. This is 1, so this is 0, so this is 1, so this is 0, so this is 1. Alright. So now let's check 1, 1. This is 1, so this is 1, so this is 1, so this is 1. So this whole thing is 0, so this is 0. And so this is 0. So now this is 1 and this is 1. So this is 1, 1. And the output of that is 0. Now I know it's a little bit complicated, but it's really actually, if you think about it, pretty, pretty simple. It might take you guys a little bit of time to understand it. But let's go ahead and show this on the breadboard now. Now this here is an XOR gate. Now, I know it doesn't look like it. That's because we're using an integrated circuit instead of individual transistors. And the important part to remember about an integrated circuit is to always use pull-down resistors for every single input, 10K pull-down resistors. Other than that, you just need to connect your cables and your outputs together properly, and it's perfectly fine. So before we, we had this big mess of four transistors that would take up the entire breadboard, now we just have three simple wires, half of which are going to ground to make our XOR gate. Let's see, both inputs are false, output is false. A is true, output is true. B is true, output is true. A and B are true, 
A and B are true, output is false. Now, if you don't have pull down resistors when using an IC, something weird is going to happen. Something like this. See? It's like getting brighter and press both of them. It doesn't always work all the time. Always use pull down resistors. So I said earlier that we we're going to learn what to do when the input is 1, 1. So for the second output, the second digit, you need a gate that will be true when both inputs are true. And this is just an AND gate. So we're going to have these inputs, A and B, also go into an AND gate. And this AND gate is going to be called carry out. And normally, this would go into your second bit adder. But as of we don't have a second bit adder, we are just going to have it go to a second LED. So now, if the input is 1, 1, this is 1, this is 1, this is 0, this is 1, this is 0, this is 1, sorry, this is 0, this is 1, 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 this is 0, but this is 1 and this is 1, because they're taking the A and B values as well. So This is 1, so this is 1. So now it'll be 1, 0, which is equal to 2 in binary. And this is a 1-bit adder. Now things get more complicated when we try and do a second bit adder because we have to factor in for carry in, which is this carry out going into the second bit as well. But we'll discuss that in the next video when we do a full 1-bit adder. So I hope you guys learned a lot. Feel free to leave a comment if you have a question, and like this video if you liked it, and subscribe to see more like this. Thanks.